today's stories, fuel is now a precious commodity for desperate Puerto Ricans. Hundreds of Rohingya refugees arrive in Bangladesh after nightfall. Mexico narrows search for quake survivors amid criticism of rescue efforts. Hawaii holds public forum on North Korea's nuclear threats. Plus, the Los Angeles Lakers hold their media day and introduce the team's young players. Hello everyone, I am Eliza Gonzalez in Manglikmot, bringing you stories from around the globe and this is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. With Puerto Rico's electric grid in shambles after Hurricane Maria, gasoline and diesel have become liquid gold in this U.S. territory. The island's 3.4 million residents urgently need it to fuel their automobiles and power generators to light their homes and businesses. But like so many other necessities in Puerto Rico, the distribution of fuel is reliant on a transportation network crippled by the storm. Puerto Rico gets most of its fuel sent by ship from the United States, but restrictions at its ports, with one closed and another operating only during the daytime, has limited shipping. Meanwhile, tanker trucks have had difficulty navigating the island's blocked and damaged roads. Adding to Puerto Rico's difficulties is the sudden surge in demand for diesel to power generators. The few gas stations operating in Puerto Rico have attracted miles-long lines of cars where drivers wait seven hours or longer in queues that snake through neighborhoods, up highway exit ramps, and onto freeways. Israel Morales, a communications advisor to municipalities in Puerto Rico, said Governor Ricardo Rosselio told mayors he will work with U.S. authorities to improve fuel distribution. Morales said the day after the storm hit, Rosselio advised mayors that there was sufficient fuel, but the problem was distribution as it was stored at the ports and terminals on the island and could not be easily routed to areas that needed it. The island's residents use about 155,000 barrels of fuel a day, less than 1% of the 19 million barrels consumed daily in the United States. Puerto Rico has no operating refineries as the last one idled in 2009. According to Jose Luis Ayala, Chairman and Director General of Puerto Rico's Division of Shipping Company, Crowley Maritime Corp., the good news is that the Port of San Juan, the island's primary port, has experienced minimal damage. He said ships carrying fuel were moved south out of Hurricane Maria's path and were able to get to the Port of San Juan once the terminal reopened on Friday. Large convoys of fuel trucks were seen traveling the highways on Monday. The first time in several days, those vehicles were out in force. Hospitals and fuel stations are taking deliveries of diesel via trucks escorted by armed guards. According to a Tuesday statement from the island's Secretary of Public Affairs, Ramon Rosario Cortez, as of Monday, 91 trucks were supplying fuel and 108 filling stations were being guarded by the U.S. National Guard. Boats carrying hundreds of Rohingya refugees arrived on the southeastern Bangladeshi coast at night on Wednesday. For the past several nights, boatmen have been using the low tide to ferry Rohingya Muslims from Maogda, who say they move at night to avoid encounters with the Myanmar military. Some 480,000 Rohingya have fled northern Rakhine since August 25 and accused the army of a campaign of violence that the UN has called ethnic cleansing following attacks by Rohingya insurgents on police posts. <laughs> Guru 
Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi has faced a barrage of international criticism over their plight for not speaking out more forcefully against the violence or doing more to rein in security forces over which she has little power. Myanmar dismisses accusations of ethnic cleansing, saying it has to tackle the insurgents, whom it accuses of starting fires and attacking civilians, as well as the security forces. Up next, Mexico narrows search for quake survivors amid criticism of rescue efforts. Hawaii holds public forum on North Korea's nuclear threat. Plus, the Los Angeles Lakers hold their media day and introduce the team's young players. Eagle News, Washington, D.C. will return in a moment. Welcome back. You are watching Eagle News, Washington, D.C. President Enrique Peña Nieto on Wednesday said that the search for survivors of a deadly 7.1 magnitude quake has narrowed to just two sites in the capital city, as hope fades of finding people alive under the rubble. The quake struck one week ago, killing 326 people, including 187 in Mexico City, damaging 11,000 homes, of which about 1,500 will need to be demolished. There has been no official figure on the number of bodies still believed to be amongst the rubble, but the largest search and rescue effort was underway at an office building in the Roma section of Mexico City, where 40 people may be buried, based on families who have reported their relatives missing. Al caso de la Ciudad de México y donde lo identifica así el gobierno de la Ciudad de México, se mantendrán las labores de rescate que prácticamente se centra a uno. A government official has reported that another 72-hour deadline for survivors has been agreed amidst criticism that authorities have not acted quick enough to find survivors and are not keeping the public up to date with information. El acuerdo que tuvimos desde el día de, de ayer este, con Campa de que se iba a dar informes a tales horas y ellos no han salido. Desde ahí empezamos mal. Nosotros volvimos a confiar en ellos y quedaron que a las 8 de la noche iban a salir a darnos eh, este, listas concretas. In response to North Korea's aggression in the Pacific, Hawaii holds a forum to help the general public prepare for what may come. EBC Hawaii's Alfred Asenas reports. Although a remote possibility, a nuclear threat to Hawaii by North Korea is still possible, and the state government is doing what it can to educate the public through public forums taking place right now here at the Capitol. This latest of a series of hearings was organized by the state's Defense Department to include the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, headed by Vern Miyagi, and the Hawaii National Guard, headed by Major General Arthur Logan. Representatives of various neighborhoods and communities, as well as public and private organizations throughout the state, were also in attendance. Dignitaries present included Hawaii State Senator Clarence Nishihara. During the slide presentation, Miyagi stressed that such a preparation applied to both Hawaii's permanent residents and its large tourist population. He began by providing a historical background on North Korea's rise as a nuclear power and its current potential of hitting Hawaii and other locations. Many of the attendees listened closely and even took notes. Miyagi then walked the audience through on the precautions to take individually and as a family or group, emphasizing the need for supplies that should last up to 14 days. He also promoted the state's online resources. He even reminded that the Pacific is still under a hurricane season until the end of November and encouraged everyone to draw some hard lessons learned from recent and ongoing events out in the Atlantic. Manager of the Waipuna condominium After the presentation, the members of the public actively took Harvard. part in the question and answer portion. One of them addressed her concerns of being under attack 
while stuck in one of the country's worst traffic jams. Emergency Management Executive Officer Toby Claremont acknowledged and offered this advice. I think I'm not the only person. One thing we know about planning for these types of scenarios is that there are, are no good solutions for a lot of the issues that come up. And one of them is, what are you doing in your car and you're driving? Uh, if you remain in your vehicle, we know that the uh, effects of the weapon would be actually amplified by being in the vehicle. This was, this was validated during you know, testing in the Nevada test site. The, your best scenario is you can get out of the car, okay? So what do you, how do you get out of the car moving 60 miles an hour? It is just similar, you think of it like an ambulance coming up behind you. Slow down, begin to pull over the side of the road. Um, get out of the vehicle and lay flat on the ground. Or if you can pull over right next to a concrete or other substantial structure, you know, head for it. But there, there are going to be people on the road. There's, it's going to be chaotic. They'll probably bang each other in the process. Um, the idea of the sirens going off and driving is, is pretty terrifying. At the same time, they're hearing it on the radio and on the phone, um, thinking about their families. It's a tough place to be. But if you're fortunate, you pull over, slow down, stop, get out. Uh, and, and the idea behind that first phase is to preserve human life in those first few seconds. That's one of the things you need to actively think about. And as Vern was saying a little while ago, you know, you're driving to work in the morning or going to whatever your routine is. You know, as you're driving around, be thinking about what you would do if you if you, if you, if you heard this. You know, I, I would. It would. It would be smart. It's a whole new routine that we kind of need to get into. Um, it's not a difficult thing to imagine, but just say, hey, if it happened right now, I'd pull off on Vineyard Street, I'd pull over on the side, and that's where I would be. But does that mean that it's going to be safe or easy? <coughs> For now, Miyagi and other officials have urged residents to get inside, stay inside, and stay tuned. If they're in the school, the online education has a shelter in place program already, so it's an existing program. But what you have to know is that plan ahead of time so you know this. So when you get your shelter in place, you are comforted in knowing that your family has already planned this and they know exactly where they are. Because you cannot call, hi, hi, I'm going to pick you up, pick the kids in school, and we'll find a shelter. You don't have, you do not have time for it. So. As of this report, North Korean officials have indicated plans to test yet another hydrogen weapon somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. To recall, Hawaii is about 4,600 miles or roughly 7,500 kilometers from North Korea. Meanwhile, efforts on the diplomatic front continue to include the Chinese Central Bank's decision to halt all of its banks in doing business with North Korea, which many believe has been instrumental in resourcing its nuclear program. Reporting from the state capitol here in Honolulu, I'm Alfred Asenas for Eagle News. I'm one with 25. Thank you, Alfred. Hawaii's Department of Education has expressed concerns that most of the public schools do not have yet the capacity to provide long-term protective shelters or the funds to procure the prescribed 14 days' worth of supplies. Efforts to resolve are still ongoing. Coming up, the Los Angeles Lakers hold their media day and introduce the team's young players. Eagle News Washington, D.C. will return shortly. This is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. I am Eliza Gonzalez, Manlik Mod. The Los Angeles Lakers hold their media day and introduce the team's young players. EBC's Ken Cruz reports. Hey everyone, Ken Cruz here at the UCLA Health Training Center, which is the home of the Los Angeles Lakers training facility. The Media Day, which is the day that all the Lakers have interviews with various media outlets, pretty much answering any questions for the upcoming season. We got this new facility, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, a breath of fresh air to everybody, you know, breathe new, uh, new life into us. You know, everybody's, everybody's pumped. We've been in here working. I'm looking forward to just 
playing Lakers basketball. I think uh, we have a different team now. And, uh, it's, just, it's an exciting time for us just to uh, change the culture of change the culture of like, Lakers basketball. Just go out there and compete, man. If they playing me off the bench, if I'm a starter, uh, going out there impacting the game, if I'm coming off the bench, uh, trying to help us win games as well as uh, you know win. You know, try to get that six man of the year. But um, if I'm doing that, that means we winning games and we competing. Defense comes first and foremost. We uh, uh, that was that was a spot that we really struggled in last year, and this year we're changing. It's a going training camp to compete. I think uh, on the defensive end, of course, we have to get better. So uh, we just want to go in there with one goal to just get better and uh, develop chemistry. Appreciate the support, uh, the continued support, and uh, you know, I'm gonna keep representing and putting on. You know, the biggest thing that I worked on this summer was just my shooting. That's uh, everybody has to space the floor, and that's that's what I added this summer. I think my confidence has got more, but it's even better. I think uh, more confident to do everything between these lines that I've been doing for a very long time now. I know you got a stringent diet, uh, pretty much. You know, uh, do you have any Filipino food in, uh, um, in the diet? Still, it's not very healthy. I know. But. Um. I mean, CC. That's probably not the best name for me, but that's probably one of my favorite dishes that I eat. Well, there you have it, your first look at the Los Angeles Lakers for this upcoming 2017-2018 season here at Media Day. Thanks for getting an exclusive look. For EN, I'm Ken Cruz, and I am 1 with 25. Looks very promising. Thanks, Ken. That is today's Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Join us again next week as we bring stories that matter to you. Visit our website at eaglenews.ph, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenewsph, and like us on Facebook. I am Eliza Gonzalez-Manglikmot, always one for 25. Happy weekend.